Welcome to another video on SRID Cloud. In this short video, I want to talk about how to set up a multi-node uh, Kubernetes cluster. In my previous videos, I talked about CRC, the Code Ready Container, which is a product from Red Hat that can be used to set up a single node um, Kubernetes cluster, the, the, the node that acting both as master as well as uh, worker node. But in this video, let's expand on that and uh, not to use CRC, but use the regular Kubernetes itself uh, from the community. And in this video, I will talk about how to set up the master nodes and uh, worker nodes and how to connect them together uh, into a Kubernetes cluster. So let's uh, get started. So Kubernetes cluster um, is um, comprising of a master node and also many worker nodes based on your need. You can also have multiple master nodes and uh, along with multiple worker nodes. So it's up to your um, requirements. So the master node is otherwise called control plane as well because this is from where the cluster is controlled basically. So in this diagram, which is very simple, there is a master node and there are a bunch of worker nodes connected to it. And this is exactly what we are going to uh, set up now. So what are the steps needed to uh, set this up? You need um, at least one master uh, node, a computer, or it can be a virtual machine, or it can be anything. The underlying infrastructure does not matter at all. You can create this VM uh, on any of your favorite uh, hypervisors like uh, VMware Workstation or the IBM Power VM or KVM on Linux or uh, Amazon Web Services on cloud or on the uh, Microsoft um, uh, cloud um, or um, on the Google Cloud Platform, anything, wh whatever be the underlying infrastructure does not matter. So you will need a, a, a bunch of computers or VNs. Uh, it can be a bare metal computers as well. If you have a bunch of computers in your um, environment, you can wire them together into your Ethernet switch or a hub, and you can create a private network as well and treat one or many of those computers as master nodes. So you will need at least one master node uh, computer. And along with that, the worker node computers. That is the first step, and you have to make sure the operating system is installed on those things uh, and they are working properly and uh, they are also talking to each other uh, appropriately using the IP address. And uh, it's preferable to have static IP addresses on them so that when uh, you reboot your computer, the IP addresses do not change. But uh, Kubernetes also um, recommends and relies upon the host names. So you have to set up proper DNS uh, entries on uh, these nodes so that the nodes can talk to each other uh, through the host names instead of um, less reliable IP addresses in case if you set these systems with a DHCP. So after uh, the DNS entries are set up, make sure they talk to each other and so on using host name. Ping test will be a good idea. And on all these nodes, then you should turn off the swap. The, the Kubernetes recommends um, no swapping of files or swapping of data. Uh, there's a way to do that, and I will show. And then install Docker uh, on all these uh, nodes, master and worker nodes. And then install the HTTPS transport so that they can uh, talk to each other and talk outside securely. And then install the GPG key so that you can install the Kubernetes components um, appropriately. And then you need to set up the uh, Kubernetes repository. So in my case, this will be a Ubuntu uh, operating system um, environment. So the APT configuration needs to be set up properly so that when you install something, uh, it can come from the Kubernetes repository. And then finally install the kubelet a kube admin and then kube ctl um, applications on all nodes master nodes and worker nodes 
and then on the master node you need to install the calico network so that uh, yeah, communication can be established between worker nodes and uh, the master nodes and um, you need to initialize the Kubernetes cluster. So once the Kubernetes cluster is initialized successfully, the um, Kubernetes cluster will be up and running with only one node, the master node. Uh, you need to add worker nodes to the cluster. So then you switch over to the worker nodes and uh, using the kubeadmin um, join command, you can join those worker nodes into the cluster. And then on the master node, you need to label the worker nodes as worker nodes. And with that, the cluster will be available for you to uh, consume. You can start developing applications and install mm -hmm. them um, on the on the nodes and uh, and so on. So now let's um, get to the details and of all these items one by one, and then see how it uh, how it works. So here is my um, master node computer. In my case, I have only one master node computer and a bunch of other worker node computers. So here is my master node computer. Let's say, let me log into it. And uh, the first step is to make sure uh, you run the sudo apt get update. and make sure the, um, the software environment is up to date. And then the second step is to install um, the Docker. And you do that with um, this command. So in my case, the um, Docker was already installed. This is how you execute uh, the Docker IO uh, install. And then you need to enable the Docker um, service so that during restarts, the Docker service will automatically uh, start. And you do that with this command. So this will enable the Docker service um, uh, so that during restarts it will automatically uh, start. It's already done in this environment. And then you run the um, sudo apt get update again. Make sure all the dependencies and uh, the latest software is up and uh, running installed. And then you need to install the uh, transport, the HTTPS transport. And you do that with uh, this command. And I will also be installing the curl uh, command as well. So with this command, the um, apt transport HTTPS and also the curl. So these two um, have to be um, installed. They are already installed on the system. And then mm -hmm. you need to make sure the GPG key is set up in this environment. So you do that with this command so this will make sure let me close this and make it a uh, little bit bigger yeah so this will make sure the apt key is downloaded and installed gpg keys and downloaded installed from the um, cloudgoogle.com this is a precursor for installing the Kubernetes uh, node. And finally, you need to add this line in a new file called kubernetes.list under hc apt sources.list.d and create this file called Kubernetes dot list and add this line in it the db http apt kubernetes.io kubernetes zenio main so this is the latest version of kubernetes um, as far as i know and after this you run 
the apt get update again so that any um, dependency or latest code is uh, downloaded and installed and now it's ready to install the kubernetes components kubelet and then kubeadm and kubectl so all these three are already installed on this master node but this is how you would install them they're already there so once this is done uh, your um, environment the master node at least has all the software that is needed and the next step is to enable the kubelet um, service and you do that with uh, system ctl enable kubelet.service so this will make sure the kubelet is started whenever you started automatically whenever you restart master node for some reason and now is the next and, and probably the final step on the master node to initialize the um, um, Kubernetes um, software the cluster and you do that with this um, command So this command will create um, the pod network 192.168.182.08 and uh, the API service will be advertised on the local system. The IP address of the local system is on this master node is 192.168.182.129. This is the IP address of this uh, system we are in right now. So this will run for a few minutes and then will print out uh, the most importantly the join uh, command the, the, the command that you have to use on the worker nodes to join them to the master node so which I will show you that in a moment when we go to the um, worker nodes and after this you need to run this command to set up the cube config and this is very important Otherwise, you have to pass this information whenever you run any kubectl command. So kubeconfig is set to hckubernetesadmin.conf. The admin.com file will be automatically created under hckubernetes by the previous step of installing kubeadmin and things like that. So now let's uh, go to the worker node and join uh, the worker node to the uh, cluster so here is my worker node computer and here I will um, install uh, the the I will go through the all the steps again from the beginning installing the docker IO and uh, installing the APT um, transfer HTTPS whatever we saw so far whatever we did on the master node until uh, initializing the the cube cluster until uh, before uh, pseudo cube ADM in it whatever we did on the master node we need to repeat all those things on the worker node but do not initialize uh, the cluster from the worker node there's no need to do that and now here is the command that you have to use to join um, the worker node into the um, master uh, cluster. So this command line, uh, you don't have to um, type all these things out. On the master node, when you initialized uh, the Kubernetes cluster, uh, the one of the line in the output will be this one, the token and the discovery um, ca cert hash will all be in it so you have to just copy paste it uh, store it somewhere safely and then use this command line on each and every worker node that you have set up to join them to the master uh, cluster so on this system is already done um, so with this the cluster 
and worker nodes will be ready for you to use basically. I may have missed something in the uh, master nodes. So before you join worker nodes into the cluster, you need to make sure um, you install the Calico network and you do that with this command on the master node. So this will make sure the Calico network is um, set up, the pod network is set up appropriately um, in this environment. So this is required before you join the uh, worker nodes into the uh, cluster. And then most importantly on the master node, you have to label the worker nodes as, um, as workers. So if you, at this point, if you do sudo kubectl get nodes it is supposed to show all the nodes including the master but look at the roles uh, column they will be empty in this environment i already labeled these worker nodes uh, appropriately but otherwise before you you label them they all will be empty and many applications will look for worker role for worker nodes so you need to do this particular command on the worker on the on the master node sorry to label them as um, worker nodes so in this example the worker node 2 has been uh, labeled as worker so as you can see in my environment i have about uh, seven computers one of them is a master node the all others are worker nodes and they're all set up um, appropriately but the look at look at the status column the two three four five and six are not ready that be, that means uh, they are all shut down right now i wanted to show you specifically so when you shut down any of the worker node then on the master node when you run sudo kubectl get nodes the status of them will show as not ready and so they will not participate in the cluster operations if there is any application running on those worker nodes they will not be functional. So you need to make sure they are all up and running. The worker nodes are all up and running. And the same thing will happen if you shut down the cube CTL, uh, sorry, the cube let, the cube let service on the worker nodes. If you shut them down for some reason, then also they will show up as not ready on the cluster, on the master node. So this is how you set up the um, yeah, um, uh, nodes and also create the cluster. So let me show you one more final thing. I'm going to run the same get nodes again with um, wide format. And let me minimize this a little bit and extend the video. Okay. So in this format, you can also see the IP addresses of the of each node, <coughs> which is somewhat useful sometimes uh, to figure out what exactly is uh, happening network-wise in your environment. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video and got an idea on how to set up Kubernetes on multiple nodes rather than just uh, one node, which is very simple and uh, sometimes not very useful if you want to uh, test some complicated uh, applications. You may want to run some applications on on many um, worker nodes instead of just only one. So thanks for joining and um, I will be producing a lot more videos on Kubernetes and OpenShift in the near future. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.